right, so today we are going to be starting, as you can tell, the schematic here, a another perimeter. And yeah, I have said that my worst perimeter I have ever made was the Magma Q perimeter in the full Basalt Delta. Um, this one may very well top it if we didn't think somewhat logically when picking this spot out for this area. Um, and chose a little small area in the center here that was a majority, you know, if this was, you know, a little bit different, I could probably move it back a little bit more this way, but we have the drowned area not too far away, so I can't go too far back uh, there, but we are going to make it work, so... Yeah, with this perimeter here, we are going to be making <laughs> something inside of a frozen ocean biome, so... Obviously not great whatsoever, but uh, definitely going to be painful. That's for sure. If we didn't have these other machines that we're going to be using here with the 12 wide and three wide trenchers, uh, that way we pretty much don't have to worry about a majority of the water. As you can tell over here, though, this one is pretty much a pure ocean trench and not ideal, but we're going to make it work. And then this one's partially ocean, but the way to get around this is what I'm doing over here is starting this 12 wide trencher in the land, even though part of it, I think, leads into a little bit of a water area. But sort of the goal you're going to want to do is to have the air, the trencher start in as much land as it can. That way it makes a block shield and then it can worry about all of the stuff here. Obviously, it's not going to be ideal here because we have a lot of gravel that's going to fall off, but uh, hopefully it's going to be early enough on that we don't get to worry about it too, too much, but still something to keep in mind. Otherwise, you, the other thing to do would just be to basically remove all of these gravity blocks in front of it uh, and then just place other blocks there, or you really don't even have to. The smart thing would just be to remove them all entirely. That way they won't cause any issues uh, with them, you know, eroding by falling off and things like that, but we'll see what we can do there. Uh, but yeah, put the three wide trencher over here and over there. I'm definitely going to start them in the, the land area. That way they go across like that. Same one with this over here. We'll start the other three wide going this way as well. That way we have a block shield going through this whole ocean here. But uh, yeah, this is going to be another one of those weird ones. We did a parrot farm previously, and now we're going to be doing a polar bear farm so over here right now in the 12 ride and if you saw in the parrot one i actually mined all that stuff out at the bottom the too high trench going all the way down uh the full 530 some odd blocks this schematic is 528 by 530 so yeah roughly 530 blocks cleared out so what i did was I just mined this too high trench like this. And this was the roof up top like that. Uh, for the other one, that took about six hours or so to mine all that manually. So I'm definitely going to be doing that. I'll definitely still be mining the three wides out here because those are a lot easier. I did try to use a little small tunnel bore on this side over here for this three wide. And it's honestly not great. Um, the speed of that is slower than it would be just to mine it out, and I would be exposing so much more lava than it would be to just, you know, mine these two blocks out. It would be a lot faster to just do that. Not ideal, but definitely only worth it for us to mine out the tunnel bore here, and then just manually mine out that one, so. But uh, yeah, about the tunnel bore by uh, Endware, it's a double speed tunnel bore. It's just shortened down to where it was. It's just one little module, essentially. Technically two, but one module of this part here. Uh, and this clears out, as you can tell, how, how it's aligned. Pretty much a perfect 12 wide trench. Got some blocks on the sides, but it's not going to be smooth. It doesn't really matter. Obviously, it clears a lot more space vertically than what's needed. We only need the two, but there's really no way you're going to do that, so... Uh, yeah, with this here, it's a double speed, so it kind of like caches a TNT here. I did cl just finish clearing out this little lava spot in front of it, so that's really the only thing you gotta worry about. Here, we're gonna be coming into a little bit of a ravine, so I gotta clear out that water more than likely, depending on what it's there. But yeah, the only downside is obviously clearing out the liquids, but it's not 
terrible. It's not great. Um, but the speed of this board definitely makes up for it. So you can see it caches two TNT there pretty much and then pushes it forward. It's pretty nice, I will say, the speed of this tunnel board compared to other ones. So the only thing you're really keeping an eye out for is any liquids. It, for the most part, is what I can tell. It deals with gravel quite well. Haven't had any issues there. And yeah, just drive over the back of the minecart the detector rail over here to stop it. See, so once all the TNT is cached, that's there. It'll then forward, pause. But uh, yeah, overall, this thing is pretty nice. It, if you have no liquids, it probably only takes about like 10, 15 minutes to get fully across. But clearing out the liquids like we have right here, it's going to be sort of nice. I need to stop that a little bit too late before realizing that there was going to be any lava here. But uh, yeah, this is what my next task is for right now. So we'll turn on the fast block placement and go to town here. So uh, yeah, this is kind of going to be my life for a little bit. Cod's on as well. But uh, yeah, going to get a head start with this. And then we'll be working on the perimeter. We'll probably have to mine out all the kelp as well like we did in previous ones. Uh, in the ocean, but not too bad. Uh, definitely better than making a kelp uh, safe world eater. It's really needed whatsoever, but uh, yeah. That little part's done. Move forward a couple more times, and then we'll get to that, and then we'll have free reign until we get to this water ravine. But uh, yeah, I have the first one fully done over here. Uh, as you may have seen in the first clip, this one's all the way across works really well. I'm definitely going to be using this for the 12 rides in the future. And then we'll just mine out the ones, like I said. Uh, but uh, yeah, definitely some good progress so far. And get back to boring this area out. And then we'll move along to the actual perimeter. All right, so I want to say six, seven hours later into the World Eater, um, we're through all the ocean, which is good. That's the main struggle with these types of perimeters in oceans is because there's just so much water. And of course, once we get down to the ravines and all that kind of stuff down below, there's going to be even more obsidian generating because there's so much water hanging down and going across. So Rubik and I have been slowly working away at this. Um, I mean, we're down to Y14 for the terrain, so that means like Y17 for the sweepers. Uh, so pretty good progress so far. I just know we have a lot of obsidian ahead of us, because, you know, we have this lot of water caves, and uh, we got this little patch over here that's pretty bad as well. There's one ravine with this little combo here, so luckily most of the water isn't been over to the side because there's nothing else besides on the one little side here so it won't be too much longer till all that water is gone we can go in and mine that there but at least it's not the whole ravine that's the main focus there i think somebody actually you know got on and cleared out a lot of the subsidian uh, beforehand because it doesn't seem like that much so far compared to some other ones we've done even in like not an ocean perimeter so i think that somebody on the server was mining obsidian because like here beforehand we didn't go over the side this is all mined out you can tell it's blowing lava yet there used to be obsidian there and they mined that so i think somebody did that so whoever that was if you want the server definitely appreciate the extra help there still quite a bit to mine still i think rubik analyzed the area beforehand it was like 20 some thousand obsidian which is just absolutely crazy and like i said we still got a whole bunch of couple of piles on the edges here you can even see on the map how big those piles are, which is where the majority of that's still going to come from. But yeah, still going to stay in spectator for the most part because we are in the frozen ocean as well. So this water can turn into ice. And if it's right in front of the sweepers, but out of the range of the TNT, it could basically cause a sweeper to get stuck. A lot easier when a sweeper to just wait until a sweeper gets stuck. For the most part, I mean, obviously that layer we were just on, we let our sweeper get stuck on a little uh, one by one of obsidian. And then that way, once all these other stuff docked on the other side, it's since it's and gate protected, we left that sweeper there, went around to mine all the obsidian that wasn't, you know, 
surrounded by water. Uh, that way we could get the majority of it out of the way. And if any ice form like it does, it did over here as we were mining, it's not going to cause any issues, which is obviously the best we need to do here. Uh, but yeah, good progress so far. I went ahead and patched all the holes in the walls with this. I think I missed one layer at the bottom because it was at just at that layer then. So I gotta go back and do that again. And then on this side, it's just sporadic with how it decided to, you know, break <laughs> TNT randomness in the one block in the wall. Of course, it's concrete, so it's not as high of blast resistance as stone, which wouldn't have broken as far as I'm aware with this. So we'll clean that up later. Not, it, it, does not, it doesn't affect anything, so I'm not in a huge rush to do that. So. Uh, yeah, not too much left in terms of height, but a lot of left in terms of all the obsidian mining to do. But we really can't mine the rest of it until all the water is gone, because if we mine, you know, like this spot over here, for example, um, if we want to start to mine this, it's just going to create more than it already is there. So there's really, it's not worth it at this point to go ahead and mine the obsidian beforehand while the wood eater is running. It's just best to wait it out until all of that water is cleared out and then we'll have probably about an hour or so of mining obsidian but it could be more it would be two hours or so if we were just mining as the wood eater was going down so yeah overall happy with how the speed of this is going of course thanks to the 12 wide trenches these trenches were really easy and we're going across here so very hopefully we finish this tonight if not we'll mine some obsidian in the morning uh looks like we'll get it on too that way we can put the mine in the obsidian but uh, yeah, that's where we're at right now. We'll be back probably once we get the farm built up and some decoration. And maybe even a time lapse of building the actual farm because it's quite a unique farm. Alright, as you saw from the time lapse, we built the full farm up, and as you can tell, I did test it a little bit, as well as, you know, getting some heads and make sure that the drops were what the wiki says they were, so we got a couple of polar bear heads that we have all just laid around here. And I just wanted to test to make sure the conveyors and stuff were working, which, of course, they are, which is a good thing. Got all the different item counts in these hopper clocks over here, and same thing on that side as well, and there's something over there, I think, too, with the cauldrons. But uh, yeah, I built this up myself in about three, a little bit under three hours, uh, not including the little storage thing I just added here, which is very similar to the parrot one that we did very recently as well. And the, the hard thing is to keep all the stuff in this four wide area because you don't want to put anything above the platforms here, which would decrease the uh, spawning you know, success rate because it's a lot higher and there's different blocks of stuff. If you're interested in how the spawning algorithm works, definitely go look at that stuff. But uh, it does take into effect, even if you have a lower block and you have a higher block all the way up there, 
it drastically reduces, which is why you see a lot of people break in Bedrock or another Pimbers, because it helps the spawning algorithm. Yeah, these you would think that these two blocks over here for the sorters would be in the way, but you know, the spawning pad is the ice there, so we could cover up all this bit over here and it wouldn't make any difference whatsoever. As long as we avoid the uh the ice here. This would maybe affect pack spawn in a little bit, but I mean it's not that big of a deal, to be honest. I mean a couple of filter items and you know it's only gonna get caught and salmon. So if it affects it by even one percent or percent i really don't care but it shouldn't do much of anything but uh yeah farm's all good i got a sword in here for the afk be in the center we still got to build a beacon somewhere um i'm debating if i want to just build it on top of this or where i'm going to fit that but we are going to need you know strength and maybe a little bit of resistance for the regen so we'll see where that gets positioned once we get the floor floor in but uh, yeah, this thing looks pretty cool. It's definitely a unique farm, that's for sure. Um, but it gets the job done, and it's one of the fastest ones, pretty much, that you can do. Because it's all synced to the 20 second spawning uh, interval with the passive spawning, which is every 400 game takes over 20 seconds. And uh, yeah, everything's all good for the most part. Added these couple of shulker box loaders down here. We only need very simple things, so I just use uh, Command Leo's very simple 1x loader. It is also precision, so we don't have to worry about any blocks on the edge here. And it just fits perfectly in here with this slime tower and it being three wide. I can fit it all. Everything is all in there. Even the item tower uh, is all good to put it to the output chest. It is going to be a single output. I mean, you know, this single chest will last multiple Hey, he's more than likely anyway, so there's really not a need to have something like that. So, uh, yeah, this is all pretty much good to go. As you can see by uh, Finn on the edge here, we got some of the decoration started up, and you can tell what kind of scheme we're going with here. Sort of that, you know, blue-ish water area, and that will go. Well, we'll have a little bit of mountain range on the top section here, but I think because we're so low... My thought is that it shouldn't really be seen. It kind of is. So maybe I'll run like a TNT duper over there just to lower that mountain. Um, because yeah, it's obviously not ideal. I thought Y one hundred would be or Y hundred and five would be enough. But I forgot there was a mountain biome in here, which is why we have a couple of emerald and stuff like that in the walls from the twelve Y treasure that I haven't bothered collecting. But uh, yeah, that's all going to go in place very, very soon. And then once this decoration is done, believe it or not, this project is completed. So yeah, these passive farms will only need simple dimension uh, stuff, even though the overworld perimeter will take longer because it's a 530 block perimeter. It's still going to go a lot faster because we don't got to worry about anything on the other side. So these passive mob farms are very unique. And I love, uh, you know, that rather than portal spam or whatever, normally comes with these farms, with like any hostile farm. And yes, the spawning conditions are a bit more annoying, so you do got to make a larger perimeter if you wanted to kind of keep the same view distance that you have on the server. Otherwise, you lower it down and then, yeah, you can just make it a small here because you don't got to worry about all too much. This farm's pretty small and you can get that stuff like there. So uh, I put 31 shulker boxes in each of those, or 32 rather. So that's never going to get completely used up. So we got plenty of space down there. So yeah, now it's onto the wall decoration, finishing that up. And then obviously the floor, which will take the majority of the time, but it has been started. But yeah, well, we're going to focus on the walls right now. They're going to be the easiest things, even with the snowflakes sticking out a block here. They'll still be pretty nice and easy to get through. Then this area is fully done, so I'll get back to that. We'll be back once this area has some more progress, if not fully finished. Alright, so the full perimeter is completed. We got the floors all in, we got all of the walls in with the snowflakes on the fade in the back there. So we fade from the light blue with a little bit of cyan, and then the dark blue at top. That little bit of cyan actually adds a lot to this area, otherwise it wouldn't look as clean of a transition from the light to the dark. So that one little row there does an astronomical amount of difference with everything here. 
Uh, so uh, yeah, everything's all done and dusted. Farms built up like it was in the last clip. Uh, but yeah, everything's all in place. Good to go. And we're now ready to use the farm. Of course, the farm is by Fallen Breath. Linked in the description and down below. If you, for some reason, wanted to build this, I mean, there's not really much besides the fact that you don't need any bedrock breaking and whatnot. That is also a huge plus, but we have the polar bear completed for the floor down here, and it looks absolutely uh, amazing. I love how the quality of the polar bear turned out, especially on this 528 block scale, uh, or 512 block scale for the uh, floor, rather, with the image converter and things like that, so... Overall, this area looks absolutely amazing. Even for how simple the wall decoration is, adding the snowflake one block in front of the uh, fade in the back definitely, you know, is something special in and of itself. And just goes to show that you don't need too much complicated decoration to still make an area look clean and pretty nice overall. However, it doesn't mean that, you know, some amazing decorations can't be made with a lot more detail of this. I've seen quite a few myself, but I do not have the building ability for that, let alone <laughs> the patience to build something like that. So uh, yeah, we got our polar bears, we got our salmon and the cod all in here. The sword usually stays right in there. So now we can just see the farm in action. So I'm going to get rid of these guys in the center here. That way we can get some more spawning and I can sink the spawning to the clock here. What we're going to do is we're keeping an eye on that 4 on the left most green number next to the 20. And when that goes, I'm going to push it and that will sync the clock roughly uh, to the spot that it will be. It's not going to be absolutely perfect. It's better than having to make a separate area to detect the spawn in on top of it. But uh, yeah, so just how quick those polar bears get moved up here and towards the center. And the spawning pads are of course synced to that 400 uh, spawning game tech cycle that the passive mobs do have, which is roughly 20 seconds that these do spawn, which is why these farms are so slow. But you can see here, get rid of them, more spawn right there. We get the babies. Unfortunately with the polar bears, they do spawn with them occasionally if they're in two or more packs. So you'll see that the babies will fall down into the lava, and then if they get pushed out for whatever reason, they get pushed back into the lava by the uh, slime blocks conveyors, which then transport everything up there. So you can see, uh, we're on a dull cap because we have the bed bot there. So we're increasing the rates a little bit, but you can see we're still not even reaching the full amount of spawning potential for double cap. So multiple caps for the size of farm doesn't make a difference whatsoever. You will occasionally get a couple extra if you don't kill the mobs in time, which is not usually the case because of the limited spawning spaces. You can make a larger farm, but then you got to worry about uh, getting the mobs to the central area in the same amount of time, which is why the size was settled on with Palm and Breath. You can see the conveyors aren't perfect, especially when they start to move around while they're uh, being transported by the slime blocks here. But of course, we only get Odd and salmon from these guys so it's not that big of a deal if we miss a polar bear every here and there because they will get collected on the next one and like i said we're not operating anywhere near the mob cap so they're not gonna do any harm to the race at all but uh yeah i mean this is still a very satisfying farm to see just because the polar bears spawn on regular ice and they move pretty fast but then of course with the 20 block per second horizontal conveyors, as well as the 20 block per second vertical conveyors that push them all up to the player is very nice to watch. As you can see, I have used it a little bit here just to get a couple of the polar bears to make sure that the farm is working, which it indeed is. So that has gone over very, very well. 
Yeah, actually got a good spawn there for <laughs> good spawn for 117, seven polar bears, one of them being a baby. Uh, but yeah, I think the best I saw was about eight or nine, which is what you would expect because it operates on a single mob cap. So getting eight or nine is basically right on the cap there due to the no over spawning. I believe since after 113 that was removed. So yeah, like I said, these farms that we're doing right now with these passive are pretty much only for fun as they have no practical use. But like that is, nobody else is doing this and it makes it uh, more unique to do something that not everybody is doing because, you know, everything right now is the same with all different types of farms, worlds, and stuff like that. So I've loved uh, this so far, taking this up away to do something it's more different than the rest and it also happens to be one of the fastest polar bear farms i mean if not the only one so over on like this perimeter and a frozen ocean was not uh, the best of things with all the obsidian and whatnot uh, but we still got it done in the end yeah still don't have a full shoulder box i wouldn't expect it to be for quite a while let's see what we got in here yeah we only got a couple stacks of stuff in there which i am not surprised about because these things are not very fast and i haven't actually gotten too many of them i'll turn the farm off here i got our polar bears up here that way we can uh keep them here and we'll start the farm next time which who knows if that'll ever happen uh but uh yes yeah, so this thing's all done and dusted frozen ocean perimeter i would rather not have to do that ever again that was terrible but in the end this place turned out amazing so I guess it was all worth it. So yeah, that's gonna be it for this episode. Make sure you like, subscribe, all sorts of things, and I'll see you in the next one.